you'll likely hear little tippy sounds and little banging sounds. I mean, you could kind of hear it in my last video, but this time it's all over. FYI, it is rain. <laughs> it's raining. And uh, so uh, today I decided I was going to make a video on uh, my changed or altered, I don't know, my opinions on transgenderism, which I know some people say it's not a word, but technically the entire transgender lexicon is all made up and all words are made up. So when somebody says that's not a real thing, well, you made up stuff, therefore I'm allowed to make up stuff. So uh, anyway, so I wanted to make this video because when I was first making videos, I went into it being like, I don't want to be offensive to anybody. I don't want anybody to like come after me. You know what, I, you know what I'm saying? You know, I don't want anybody to just like right out of the gate, you know, snake bites at me. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want anybody doing that. You don't want to be discouraged when you, when you freshly make stuff, when you start making stuff. So I went into it going like, I'm not trying to convert anybody. I'm not trying to sway anybody's opinions or whatever. I'm just trying to tell my story, basically. And that's, and, and I mean, that's what it is and will be. But as I've progressed through making more and more videos, and meeting more people, talking with them. It's not like they converted me or anything. It was more like I already had all this doubt of my transgender-oriented beliefs. I already had doubt with them. And then when somebody comes along, when they address the little doubts that I had in my head about transgenderism, and then they just put it out in plain English, that's when I was just like, Oh, well, duh. It was almost like a permission to be like, to address my doubts and say, yes, you're real. And so I know this video is going to be a little like a hot button issue a little bit. And some people aren't going to like it, but I don't want to continue making videos being like trying to dodge around what I actually believe in, just so people can be happy. I want to say what I want to say, because that's what I believe in. I want to first address what I used to believe in for transgenderism. When I first detransitioned, I simply thought, but well, because I thought I was the only person to detransition, I wasn't like looking online. I, I believe I said it before that like detransition wasn't in you know, my vocabulary, so I wasn't about to look it up, and I, I just didn't think it was a real concept, so I thought I was completely alone, and because I thought I was completely alone, I was like, oh, okay, well then I must just be not truly trans then, right? Even though while I was transitioning, I thought I was super true trans, so it's like, that what? <laughs> Doesn't make much sense. I thought that some people, like, truly benefited from transitioning. I thought that these trans identified people were, they had that the incongruence. I truly thought that this was a, a concept and that I just didn't have it. Not that I was at the time while I was detransitioning thinking, oh, I have a sex brain or something. I, I wasn't thinking of any of those things. Anyway, so I truly believed that there was uh, a disconnect from the brain and the body, and gender was in the mind, and that sex was just, you know, you're just your genitals, as if all the chromosomes are just stuck in the, the phallus or, <laughs> or, the, or the vagina or something. Like When I was first making videos, I was trying to urge this message that I'm not trying to convert anybody, I just want people to think before they take any drastic actions, and I got a couple comments, not like a huge ton or anything, but like I got a couple being like, 
oh, you made me realize that uh, I am transgender. Thank you for, like, you know, helping me figure piece that last thing together. Thanks. And when I read those at the time and still today, it puts a really bitter taste in my mouth. I have no power to uh, make anybody, like, sway them. I have no power over what others decide to do with their lives. Yet, it makes me feel like I, I failed to convey exactly what is wrong with transitioning to begin with. I don't see critical thinking, I see biased thinking, I see someone trying very hard to find proof that they should transition or continue it, and I gave them that last excuse to go through. It's like, pro probably exactly like when a uh, gender-confused person, whether they're teen or an adult or whatever, is googling, how do I know that I'm really trans or not? And the whole intent behind why they're searching that up on Google or whatever search engine it is, their intent is to find permission. Somebody to basically say, yes, you are trans, just do it. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for permission and not anything at all to say, hey, you're, you're not this, you should go an alternative route. And the thing is, that's what obsession is when you get, like, that. this is what I went through too. I was so obsessed when I first discovered it and things started to fall into place for me. And then I became so engrossed and obsessed with it, I wanted to be this thing that I was reading. And because I wanted to be this thing, I bent my entire childhood just to be like, knock it into my thick skull at the time. Oh yes, you are trans. Like, I was trying so hard. And any evidence against it, if it had come up at any point, which it didn't, usually it doesn't, especially today, even if somebody with a obsessive thinking sees these things, they're gonna try so hard to completely dismiss it. Even if in the back of their head they're like, you know what, that article or whatever, or that scientific study was right, but you, you know what, I'm angry, I don't, it's not telling me what I want it to tell me, so piss off, that sort of thing. And of course none of that None of, that, none of that process makes any sense, because that's what obsession is. It's just a nonsensical, irrational thing that you're just trying to pursue and hammer forward. When I have described why I detransitioned, I feel like maybe I didn't go deep enough into why I needed to. It wasn't as simple as, oh, I'm just a heterosexual woman. I was attracted to straight men and they weren't attracted to me because obviously they're straight. When I was transitioning, and I know a lot of other detransitioners who, uh, when they recount their whole transition thing, a lot of it was fueled by self-hatred. And I had a lot of self-hatred. Not to the point of wanting to kill myself or anything. I, I'm not that type of person, but I just was like, you know, like, if lightning struck me, I would be totally fine with it. You know, that was kind of my mentality. When it comes to self-hatred, it's something that's so... Like, self-hatred, I don't know if I'm gonna, like, illustrate this right, but it's kind of like this fine-tuned instrument inside your brain where it is so seamless that you don't even notice that it's really there and you take actions that perfectly reflect your self-hatred and you don't even realize that these actions you're taking and these beliefs that you hold are because of this finely tuned instrument that is self-hatred. Because you don't notice it, you're not going to be thinking about it while you're trying to evaluate what your gender is and and whether or not you should be should uh, transition. It took me a very long time, even after de detransitioning, 
to realize that it, it was fueled by self-hatred. It was fueled by internalized misogyny. Self-hatred uh, comes from typically depending largely on how your parents treat you. It, it's also kind of like how your friends treat you uh, when you're very young, but largely it's your parents and if they don't love you enough, if they're not making it very obvious that they love you or you felt you had to bend over backwards just to have them show you a little bit, a smidgen of love or affection or whatever, if your parents don't seem like they like you, then why should you like you? Or why should, if your friends don't like you, why should you like you? It's like, if everybody around me seems to dislike me, then I must be an unlikable person. And you know what? If that's what they're doing to me, then they are probably very right and I need to hold these beliefs that they do about me. You know, it's technically not about you. It's about their insecurities that they're just <laughs> regurgitating out onto you. But anyway, so kids who aren't loved or aren't loved enough don't think that they're, that they're worth it. They're not worth anybody else's love, like when they get into a relationship with somebody or have good friends, you know, they don't think they're worth it. They don't think that they're worth any good thing that happens to them. And they also believe that they deserve the bad things that happen to them. So transitioning your supposed gender in your mind and whatnot uh, is a perfect reflection of self-harm. It's exactly the route a person prone to anorexia nervosa would take, or a bulimic, or some kind of hard drug addict, an alcoholic, uh, any vice, you name it, trans identification, it's in there. Now I believe uh, you know, the past probably couple months, maybe, I believe now that no one is transgender, and that's the part where it's like, oh my god, you said a controversial thing, or something like that. I don't believe that transgender is a concrete concept manifested in reality. I believe it is strictly an imaginary concept. To transition one's gender implies that gender is arbitrary and unrelated to the body. As I said earlier, it's like there's that disconnect. Uh, the body and mind being completely separate from each other. To, to transition one's sex implies that surgically altering your genitals actually means, uh, for, for, any, for instance, uh, your inverted penis, your hole, your newly made hole, is now literally a vagina and that therefore you're a woman because gender is apparently solely based on appearances not so much you know chromosomes it's it's kind of like a irrelevant kind of point but i know some people talk about it and they argue it and it doesn't make any sense to me even coming from me who's very like spiritual and religious at the same time i don't believe in gendered souls your soul is just your soul. It has no gender. It has no age. It has nothing really attached to it besides your feelings on stuff. Your, I guess, maybe perception on things. Just how you approach life. That's that's the sort of energy kind of the soul is, I guess. And and it shows specifically to go into a female or male body to experience the female or male experience. So the whole point of your soul going into a body is to challenge itself. And males and females have different challenges. And of course, like your individual life also has its own challenges. And that's why your soul specifically chose this life. Anyway, that's like woo woo. And people probably don't want to hear it. <laughs> Anyway, so I believe that the only concrete thing that actually exists is it's all androgyny and, uh, you know, intersex people exist and they're kind of like probably literally androgynous. Um, I don't believe that surgery is useful for anyone, in period, except for maybe intersex people. I don't really fully understand them. Anyways, I just don't really think, I don't think that surgery helps anybody, especially those who just 
think they have an incongruence with their body and mind and whatnot. I don't believe that cross-sex hormones are useful for anybody, period. I think that it's dangerous. And because it's irreversible, nothing can be done about going back if you wish to go back. And I know there's a lot of people who have been like, oh, well, I transitioned, so I'm never going to go back ever, ever, never, ever. <laughs> Wah! <laughs> never! <laughs> never going to go back! No! <laughs> you can't make me! <laughs> Kicks and screams. <laughs> Yeah, no. Anyway, uh, like, obviously, consciously, you're going to be like, no, of course not. But you just never know because there's people who identified as trans for seven to ten years, maybe even more. And then they're like, oh, wait, I'm actually OK with being my biological sex. And then they detransition. So you just you just never know. And that's why it's like because it's so ambiguous and you have no idea what's how you're going to change your mind in the future and doing these irreversible surgeries, that's why it's dangerous. And that's why you shouldn't do it. And I just don't think there's any benefit to it at all whatsoever. And if there seems to be a benefit and some trans people say, oh, I love being transgender because of all these and I don't regret my surgeries at all. You have to remind yourself, and I have to remind myself too when I see it because I see this so happy person. They're just like, oh yes, my uh, my surgically created phallus, it's perfectly imperfect, and I love it as it is, you know. And they just seem so happy and pleased with themselves. And they'll even like make videos saying, listing off reasons why it's so great being transgender. And then when I actually listen to their reasoning, I'm like... You don't have to be trans to, like, have these benefits. And these benefits aren't even that good. One of them being something like, uh, oh, being trans has really made it apparent, like, who my real friends are. And I just think, like, there are tons of people out there who aren't trans and it's something about them, whatever it is, I don't know something some personality thing or they have a certain stance on something and they make it very apparent to other people this is what their stance is that's their shit test you know and and people are people will be like oh well i don't like that that's, that's the stance that you hold so i'm gonna i'm gonna use the bathroom and climb out the window <laughs> and never return anyway so they're they're showing this side that looks so great and amazing it's like wow their life seems so put together but like you, you have to remind yourself like this is the internet this is a snippet of their life or maybe you're watching a documentary but anyway it's a snippet it's a very calculated you know, filtered, heavily edited, certain window that they're having you look into, and you're only seeing what they want you to see, and they'll want you to see, like, the good, and then if there's any bad, they'll try to weave it into something that's actually good anyway, like when you go into an interview on a job, <laughs> you know, you'll say, <laughs> the interviewer will be like, oh, what are your flaws? And you'll be like, oh, I'm a perfectionist. You're trying to weave in that flaw to be, you know, actually it's it's beneficial. Come on guys, come on. S sweating profusely. I I've watched videos where they'll say like, oh, I went through this surgery and uh, I almost lost my fake penis or I, almost completely lost the ability to urinate and now I have, and I could have been forever cursed to be on a catheter the rest of my life. But luckily I didn't or I did have a little bit of a complication but they somehow like got in there and removed it or, or whatever it is. But it's just like here's the risk and you try to dismiss it so hard and I think that's just such a not very smart thing to do in any case not just the physical stuff but also like the mental stuff the psychological stuff uh like what if that person who did transition was like actually i'm changing my mind on this that was a little scary and now i'm having doubts and then their friends fuel them with no, just keep going with it, uh, you'll feel better, just go to the next surgery, uh, take more hormones, whatever it is. Like, you know, they just keep on encouraging that person to continue their transition. 
or they just feel pressure from their audience because a lot of the time they do a whole shebang on YouTube or Tumblr or wherever it is and they're showing their transition and so they're like, well, I'm kind of obligated to continue to do trans stuff because that's kind of what the people want and I want to please them because I am actually a huge people pleaser, maybe. And you know, it's just like, this is my brand and I don't want to lose all of this popularity. So they'll like, they'll continue to weave this story of, oh, it's actually great. It wasn't, or just as simple as they can't swallow their pride. Uh, in any case, they'll keep the truth to themselves uh, for whatever, for whatever reason that is. So this all being said, do I hate anybody who self-identifies as transgender or transsexual? No, I do not hate anybody. And I dictate what anybody does to their bodies? No. If you're an adult and living outside your parents' house, you can do whatever the hell you want within the confines of the law, I guess. And, you know, do I approve? No, I don't approve. But I'm just some random-ass human being on the internet that has no bearing on your life whatsoever, so it's not like my opinion really matters that much. Am I happy to see somebody who's trans-identified spreading around their message that uh, being, you know, uh, transgender and wanting other people to be transgender or cross-dressed, um, especially if they're underage. You know, like telling y young people, oh, there's so many benefits to transitioning, let me influence you. Uh, I am absolutely not happy about that, and I heavily discourage that as well. You shouldn't be, like, I mean, like, if you're somebody who's transition you're fully aware that uh you'll never be the opposite sex blah 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 blah, blah whatever it is and you seem to have sound opinions and uh you don't want to influence other people like that that's great that's great don't try to influence other people don't try to give advice to other people who think that that they are trans i think you should just stay completely out of it in my opinion, I may not support their medical transitioning, nor will I believe or support in their identity, because I will see that even though you look like a man, I will acknowledge fully that you're still biologically a woman, but I respect how respectful these sorts of people are to others, and if you respect other people and stay in your lane, you know what, live your life. It doesn't affect me. Go ahead, do it. I don't care. But many of these people that I'm talking about uh, abhor the fact that transgenderism has made it into politics, law, into schools and universities, and we can agree on that being bad, and as well as other certain things like transitioning children, like we can agree on that, and I'm, that's cool. I'm glad we can have that sort of common ground. If you believe gender is complicated, I disagree with you. It's as simple as the binary implies. You're a woman if you're an adult human female, and you're a man if you're an adult human male. Gender is not stereotypes, and everyone who's self-identified exclusively runs off of harmful stereotypes. They're very backwards now. Just because you behave more femininely, whatever that means, doesn't mean you're a woman. It means you're a man who behaves differently from the norm. And I'd say if you're a man acting femininely, you're actually acting manly. Uh, because that's literally what you are, a man. Manhood is whatever and however you behave. And I know that just seems like, oh, that seems completely wrong. Uh, manhood is when you're, when you can stand on coals and not get hurt. <laughs> manhood is being able to take a bullet ant, like a hive of bullet ants, and just shove your hand into it and get bitten and, and survive and not cry. Manhood is not crying, 
expressing your emotions. Not at all. Manhood is being stoic and cool all the time. Manhood is being Mad Max. <laughs> You're wrong, random lady on the internet. How dare you? <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Okay, slow down. <laughs> slow down. Manhood is actually whatever and what, however you behave as a man, or vice versa for women. However you behave as a woman or a man, that is what womanhood is and that's what manhood is. Because everything else, the whole like, the manly, the manliness or the womanliness, like that's just from cultural norms and also people bullying you being like oh well timmy's wearing a dress it's not being manly enough Ooh, let's go bully him it's just that that's what it is for a lot of these transgender people is just being bullied for how they however they want to express themselves as when you get bullied you get really strong feelings on these things and that's why they dig their heels when it comes to their stance. Anyway, I will never fully understand how anyone could believe that the other side has it better, and that's what it always is. Like, uh, a man will think, oh, well, I do these things, and it's not socially acceptable as a man to do it, so therefore, if I'm a woman there, then it's gonna be, I'm gonna be more socially acceptable. Or for a woman, it's like, oh, I have these masculine tendencies, so therefore, if I'm, if I'm a man, then I'm gonna be more socially acceptable. Uh, you find that once you start transitioning or you're very much into it, you'll find that you have now taken on <clears throat> the limitations and also the bullying of the other side of it. So when a woman is trying to present as male, she'll find struggles that men struggle with because, you know, you're still going to be a woman, right? So you still have these tendencies as a woman, like a woman... Uh, presenting as a man has this limitation of well now she can't go up to someone's kid and be like oh oh let me interact with your child like that's so, your kid's so cute like instead of being like fully accepted i've been like oh it's a harmless woman going up to my child that's fine it's now ooh, i'm suspicious of you uh or if the woman is still like you know, uh, I still have emotions even on testosterone and I want to express them. And then other people are like, oh, well, you're a man, so you shouldn't be expressing your emotions at all. You have to be tough. Put your hand in that anthill right now. <laughs> you're a man, you know. <laughs> and then meanwhile, you have the men who are presenting as women and they have these masculine interests. I mean, I can't speak for men on what they're doing. Maybe a woman still likes to do makeup, for example, but when she's a man and it's not acceptable for men, especially straight men, to be wearing makeup, then it'll just be like, oh, well, now I can't wear makeup anymore. Or they'll have it in their head like, well, men don't wear makeup. I like makeup, but I'm not going to wear it because that's not the image I have of men. And so they will avoid it altogether. So essentially, all that is boiled down to pick your poison, which is the motto, in my opinion, of transgenderism. Uh, moving on. Another thing that I never realized before, and I think this is very important, uh, really important actually, is how sexist and homophobic the entire concept of transgenderism is. And, uh, I, I can see people being very like up in arms when they see a sign that says transgenderism is misogyny or transgenderism is homophobia and then the, the people on the other side would be like well no that's not right I am a full supporter in the LGB you know I I have lesbian friends you, you know here's my token lesbian friend god damn it i go to pride parades of course how can we possibly be homophobic or misogynist we are all feminists here of course like i can see them totally getting up in arms on that but the thing is and this never crossed my mind until recently but it's not about 
people outwardly being homophobic to somebody else, although that does happen. It's all inward. It's all participants who are lesbian or gay and they decide to transition. That is where the homophobia comes from. And for sexism, it's not them being sexist towards somebody else, it's them deciding, well, I'm gonna transition. And when you're transitioning, it's saying, I hate my body, my sexed body so much. I hate that my body and mind is attracted toward the same sex, so therefore I'm going to transition so I can look heteronormative, or I can have the benefits of the opposite sex, whatever that is. Whatever that is. I mean, the little bit of outwardness is a trans person trying to convert a similar person to them. Like, if they're trans and they they are previously thought themselves as lesbian and they're going up to another lesbian or a lesbian came up to them with their woes and whatnot and then they go oh well let me introduce you to transgenderism your life will be saved from uh from being a homosexual here let me save you that is an act of I don't want you to be happily lesbian or gay. I want you to be transgender instead and looking heteronormative. I have watched a handful of videos of trans-identified women, women specifically, reveling in the fact that they've converted other lesbians to, to desire transition. And it really, it, it's disgusting to me. Like, how can you be like, oh, I've helped them. And I know it comes from a place of like, I want them to be happy. I don't want them to suffer anymore. And it's not something like they come into it maliciously. Of course not. They're thinking I'm genuinely helping this person because it helped me. That's what it is. But it's really sick and disgusting to me because it's just like, why can't you accept that you're a lesbian? Why can't you let, why can't you teach somebody else, hey, it's okay to be a lesbian or a gay guy. It's totally okay to do that. Embrace it, you know, be flamboyant, be what you are. Like, why can't we teach other people, it's okay. It's okay to be a woman. It's okay to be a man. It's okay to act in a way that's not the norm. Like, instead of saying, hey, embrace yourself. It's great. It's so freeing. It's destroy your body, remove healthy body parts, or invert them into you, and uh, have that be your freedom. Cut yourself up. That's your freedom. For me, when I was transitioning, I was essentially saying to myself and other people indirectly that I hated women. And you know, looking back on it, I genuinely think that I did hate women. I hated being a woman. For instance, literally at one point, I wanted to join MGTOW, which is men going their own way. And I was into the part where uh, they were like kind of trashing on women. And, uh, and at one point, I was anti-feminist. Uh, anyway, so what really baffles me is how these people would rather lay down and go this easy route of heteronormativity or taking the alleged benefits of being the opposite, opposite sex and not doing anything to support women's rights or fighting to make it acceptable for men to do non-traditional things. You'd just rather be like, well, I'm gonna just go this easy way of, well, if I'm a man, then I, I don't have to wear makeup at work or something like that. Instead of saying to your boss, hey, I don't want to wear makeup as a woman because maybe there's a rule in place where you have to wear makeup as a woman. You have to wear skirts or something like that. Like, there's, a, there's a status quo or whatever. And uh, you decide, well, 
it, like instead of being like, hey boss, I think it's outrageous that we have to do these things as women. I want to be more comfortable. Why can't I wear pants or something? Like, why can't you fight for what you want rather than being like, okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go across the fence now and take those benefits. You giving up and deciding to transition gives the signal to everyone around you and the next generation of people after you that being abnormal is so bad that it's not worth the effort to destigmatize that thing like homosexuality or just being abnormal for whatever it is, you know, gender non-conforming. It's saying that homosexuals aren't allowed to be homosexual, that girls aren't allowed to be tomboys, that boys aren't aren't allowed to be flamboyant or expressive. I've learned that transgenderism is just the extreme opposite of the traditional gender stereotypes that our parents and grandparents enforced on us. Instead of those stereotypes enforced onto the appropriate sex, it's enforced onto the opposite sex instead, and that is no better than the former. And to be very clear, what I mean by uh, gender non-conforming, I mean that a male or a female person is behaving similarly to the opposite sex, but being completely comfortable in their bodies with no desire to switch pronouns around or their names or going down the medical path of transitioning in any way. They just, they just kind of act a little unexpectedly, I guess, is what I'm trying to get at. Anyway, so I'm going to leave it at that. I have more things to talk about. I don't know how to end videos, so uh, I'll um, see you when I see you. Uh, goodbye.